the other people to come on board, we can look through this as well. Now, this is basically a summary of what was in the book. <clears throat> so there you can see the universal motor may operate on DC and AC. The speed is more or less the same on AC and DC. High starting torque, variable speed, manufactured in two types, the concentrated pole and the non-compensated. The one is the lower power rating and the distributed field compensated winding, that is high power. Then we go to the non-compensated motor, that's two salient poles, magnetic part is laminated, Armature wound type, laminated core, the uh, straight or skewed slots, commutator leads of armature winding is connected. Then distributed field, compensated type, stator core similar to a split phase motor, armature similar to a small DC motor. Compensating winding is used to reduce the reactance voltage present in the armature when running on AC. High resistance brushes used to assist commutation on DC. <clears throat> on AC, the following drops must be considered. Winding reactance voltage, transformer induced EMF due to the direct axis, and the transformer induced EMF due to the quadrature axis. And the single phase series universal motor, that is single line drawing. So we've got the armature current, resistance of the field, inductance of the field, and then we go to the armature, armature reactance, resistance, and induced, air, induced EMF. And then we've got the direct axis and the quadrature axis flux. Any questions so far? Okay. okay, now if you look at direct DC excitation, the torque and voltage induced TD, and developed torque is K phi D I A. Phi D is naturally your direct axis. No? E is K phi direct omega M. Now the operation is in, in the linear magnetic part, TD is K I A squared, and E A is K I A W M. For AC excitation, we ne neglect eddy currents, and I A is in phase with phi D. I A is I max cos omega T, phi D is phi D max cos omega T. Then again, E A is K A phi D omega M, and we can substitute that back and we get K A phi D max omega m cos omega t. And phi d is the RMS value of the direct axis flux. <clears throat> Instantaneous torque, Ka, phi d, i a, and we can substitute and go on and go on and then we get Ka, phi d, i a. Now if linearity is assumed, normally it will be, then T is K starting at IA squared, EA, KST, IA, omega M, and T mechanical is EI, and torque is EI over omega M. <clears throat> now, the voltage equation for AC excitation, V, is equal to IA RF plus RA plus IAJ XF plus XA plus EA. Now, if we put that in a phasor diagram, we've got IA as the base, and then IA XF and IA XA. Yes? Was there a question? Right, and 
those things that are in phase with the current, IARF, IARA, and EA. Oh, the internet is unstable, it's always old. Then if we look at DC excitation versus AC, we get A, DC over E, AC is equal to omega M, DC over omega M, AC. Did you get that? Right, and then yes, if you go through all this, Substitution, you get at the end EDC of EAC is one over cos phi. Okay. Then for the compensated motor, oh, yo, 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 you don't come through. Can you repeat what you said because it's all scrambled on the side? Right, the compensated coil is connected in series with the armature, which will produce flux in the opposite direction to the Q-axis, produced by IA. So uh, in L effective is L of the armature plus the inductance of the coil minus 2M. LA is the inductance of the armature, LC is the inductance of the compensating winding, and M is the mutual inductance between LA and LC. <clears throat> Again, there is the equivalent circuit and the phasor diagram. And then the alternative is designed for a compensating coil. You can see there, that this sort of compensating winding. The coil is predominantly inductive, so it's got a high L over R ratio. And it opposes the Quadrative flux produced by IA. Let's look at an example there. 120 volt, 60 hertz, 185.6 motor, runs at 2000 revs per minute, takes a current of 0.6 amp, connected to the DC source. Resistance and inductance measured at the terminals are 20 ohm and 0.25 Henry, respectively. We must compute the torque and the speed and the power factor when connected to an AC supply. Okay, this is example in the book, so you can just follow that. For DC, we have EA minus V is equal to V minus IA, RA. It's 120 minus 0.6 times 20, that gives us 108 volt. XL is two pi FL. 2 pi times 60 times 2.25 Henry, that gives us 94.25 ohms. This is our phasor diagram, IA, V, IAX, IR, and EA. So EA plus IR squared is equal to this squared, and then you can get that. Pythagoras is theorem. So EA plus IA, IR is equal to the square root of V squared minus IAX squared, which is this one. 
and then we can get E A if we manipulate the formula, then we get E A is ninety three point eight four volts. This can be written as if we can say that will be I A X plus I R plus E A squared is equal to V squared. And then we manipulate the formula. Okay, NAC is NDC times EDC over EAC. So therefore it runs a bit slower, 1737.78 refs per minute. Power factor cos phi is EA plus RA divided by V. Now that gives you basically that angle there, but these lines are parallel, so that is your power factor line as well. And that gives us 0.88 lagging. The mechanical is EA times IA, which is this 93.84, which is EC, EA, and the current is 0.6, so that gives us 56.3 volt watt. Talk <clears throat> P mechanical divided by omega is 56.3 times 60 over 2 pi times the speed. You know, omega m is omega m is 2 pi n over 60 now. So if we divide by that, then the 60 goes on top. That gives us 0 0.309 Newton meters. And the efficiency the output divide by the input is 56.3 and the input is 120 volts 0.6 amps and the efficiency of 88 percent that gives us 88.9 percent efficient everything okay there yes sir all right now, if we look at the compensated motor, the armature is of the distributed type. Winding is distributed in more than one slot. And the winding factor is the distribution factor and the pitch factor. Now, KD is the distribution factor, is the phasor sum of the induced EMF divided by the arithmetic sum of the EMFs. Now, if we look at that, those are the arithmetic sum and that is the phasor sum. So that means it will be 2 over pi. And now the transformer induced EMF due to the quadrature flux is 2 square root 2 pi q fs frequency number of turns on the armature times the winding factor divided by c. c is the number of parallel parts. Now if kp is 1 then KW is equal to KD. And the ETAQ, transformer induced EMF due to the quadrature axis. Two square root two, phi Q, FSNA times two over two pi N. Now there we say Z, C is equal to two P induced armature. So if we've got two poles, that's where the two comes from. And E, rotational in the armature due to the direct X flux, is two square root through, pi D, N A, F R over two P. Now F R, that is the speed at which the rotor is running. And that is P times N. And then we get to the ETSD, the transformer induced EMF and the stator due to the direct axis, 4,44 for ID, FS, NS. Right, so again, now we can write this equation V is I R M angle zero plus E red zero plus I X M angle 90 plus E T A Q angle 90 plus ETSD angle 90. And then we get to the equation 
of v squared is i r m plus e rad squared plus basically the same as the previous one. There's just a few um, for, um, equations more. And of course, phi still remains i r m over e rad over v. Now let's look at an example there. A single phase two pole, 230 volt wave wound universal motor has a number of turns on the stator as 400 and the armature is 1200. The full load current is one amp and the direct axis is 0.8 milliweaver. Z of the motor is 20 plus J30 at 50 hertz and the speed then is 7,000 revs per minute. We must calculate phi Q, P developed, P out, N for 230 volt DC, 1 amp. Uh, okay, 1 amp, we have I, I, IRM is 1 times 20, IXM is 1 times 30, ETSD is 4,44, phi D, FS, NS. So it's 4,44.8. 50 and 400, it gives us 71.04 volts. E rotational arm armature direct axis is 2 square root 2 phi d f r n a over c. So it's 2 square root 2 times 0 0.8 times 7000 divided by 50, that gives us our frequency times the number of turns, which is 1200. And it is a wave bound, so C is equal to 2. That gives us 158.4 volts. And then V squared is IRM plus E rad squared plus IXM plus I ETAQ plus ETSD squared. And if we multiply and go mad, we find that ETAQ is 44.127 volts. Now, we have ETAQ, now we can determine phi Q. Now it's 2 square root 2 phi Q times F times the number of turns times 2 over 2 pi. So that gives us 817 micro Weber. Power factor IM RM plus E rad over V. That's 20 plus 158.4 divided by 230 gives us 0.776 lagging. V in is VI cos phi, 230 times one times 0.776, 178.4 watts. P developed, EA, IA, 158.4 times one, gives me 158 watts. NDC, NAC over cos phi, 7,000 divided by 0 0.776. That means it will run at 9,020.6 revs per minute. <clears throat> okay, any questions there? <clears throat> right, I will post this as well. And I think this now finishes this chapter on special machines. You can do that pro those problems. Oh, exercise. Yeah. The single phase series universal motor. Sorry, sir, can you repeat? You were breaking up, sir. All right. Um, this finishes this chapter. It was 6.9.1. And then I think there's one or two examples that you can go through and make sure that you understand it. And that brings us to. All right. Seems I'm back. 
All right, the last chapter, okay, chapter four, seven, is a lot of theory that you must go through. I think there might be some theory in the exam. I don't know yet, I haven't seen the paper. But the last one that we're gonna look at is synchronous machines. And that is chapter eight on page 259. Let us find it yet. All right. Oh, okay. Doesn't really matter. Right, we've got a few minutes left and we must start again with a new thing because we only got 40 minutes available each time. All right, now if you look at the basic synchronous model, model, first of all, you have to look at all those pages 286 to 292. And then we come to the synchronous model. We've got the excitation and the armature with its resistance and the actins. And it's synchronous and armature reactants, those two are grouped together to form the leakage reactants of the system. And then the impedance of this synchronous motor or alternator is ZS is RA plus X, JXL. And the formula for the induced EMF, E angle delta, Z angle zero, plus IA, ZS, beta plus or minus phi, where beta is your impedance angle and phi is your load angle. The voltage regulation is E minus V over V, or in per unit, it will be E minus one. Now the no load characteristic, is a variation of the output voltage as a function of the excitation current. When the alternator operates at rated speed with armature terminals open circuited. So then it's like the same as a DC machine. You've got your excitation current and the induced EMF for that specific current. And so until you reach there you that is the end of your straight line. And then it becomes not constant anymore. And the short circuit characteristic, that is with the terminal short circuit, the machine running at synchronous speed. And we start from zero with the excitation and we increase it till the maximum. So then we've got a armature current against the field current. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. <clears throat> now, we can determine the voltage regulation by two methods. One is a synchronous method, and the other one is Rothert's simple MMF method. Now, the synchronous method, where the synchronous impedance is known, and the full current full load current and power factor is now. Let's look at an example. We have a three phase 600 kVA 3300 volt alternator that has a star connected stator. stator. <clears throat> the resistance of the winding is 0.37 ohms per phase 
and a synchronous impedance of 4.3 ohms per phase. You must compute the voltage regulation. A unity power factor, 0.8 power factor lagging, and 0.8 power factor leading. And then we must draw the phase diagrams. Now S is square root 3 V line I line, and we get the full out current, 104.973. Now, the impedance angle is R cos of R over Z, that gives us 87.05 degrees. So therefore, E is V plus I Z, so 1905.26 plus 104 angle zero because it's unity power factor, times the impedance 4.3 angle 86.5. That gives you a total voltage of 3,455.73 volts per line. <clears throat> and now for the phasor diagram, remember that IR is always in phase, the volt drop, in phase with the current, and IXV will always be perpendicular to the current that causes it. And then that will be IZ, and the induced EMF and the load angle. Now, if you go to 0.8 lagging, then the current will be 104.973 angle minus 37.8687 times 4.386.5. That gives us a voltage of 2231.49 angle 27. Now, again, there we have the current. The volt drop IR is always in phase with the current. IAXS is perpendicular to the current causing it. And therefore we get E and the load angle delta. Here you can see that E is already bigger than E on the first one. And then for 0.8 lagging, then the angle is positive 36.87. And that gives us 1709.7 angle 12. So the current is leading and the volt drop parallel to IR and by IX perpendicular. No? And therefore we get E there. And now E is less than E in the lagging position. All right, so if we look at the voltage regulation, it was 47.2 for the first case, 17.1 for the second case, and minus 10.26 for the third case, because now E is less than V. <clears throat> yeah, we can say that for a leading power factor, E is always less than V. And for a lagging power factor, E will always be bigger than V. <clears throat> Have you got that? Yes, sir. Good. Now, Rossard's method, that's the one that usually gives the students a lot of problems. Oh, first of all, you need the open circuit and the short circuit curves. And then you can calculate the full load current using either S or P. And then E Rothert, that will be V plus I E R A cos phi, which is the arithmetic sum. So you just add it without an angle. <clears throat> now the phase sum of the excitation for Rothert's method, F resultant, in other words, the MMF, which is the field current that causes it, is the F Roth, angle zero plus F short circuit, 90 plus or minus phi. Now for zero power factor lagging, short circuit is in direct opposite position with Rothen. So there we have F Rothen, and then F short circuit, and the resultant is less. 
Hero Power Factor Leading. F short circuit is in phase with Rother. So F rest is F Rother plus FC. And remember both of them are at the angle zero. Now for a lagging power factor, we have F Roth at an angle zero plus F short circuit at an angle 90 minus phi. Now, why this? I've swapped these around so that we can add them arithmetically, ach, vectorially, to get to the resultant. For a leading power factor, the resultant MMF is the rostered MMF at an angle zero plus short circuit angle 90 plus phi. And then we have to know the short circuit ratio is the ratio of the excitation to give rated voltage or no load to the excitation to give you circulate full load current on short circuit. So RAC is F rated at no load and F short circuit at full load. So that can be get as one of the X per unit. Okay, now 